Hi everyone, my name is Justin and I'm here to show you the essential brushes for the organic pack in Painter and Particle Shop. These are some really great brushes that help you to distribute an organic kind of matter over anything that you might need to add to as far as organic or something like this. As you can see the background of these organic brushes is a bronze statue um, that I added to kind of what looked like it had been sitting there for, you know, a, a particular amount of time that it started to add some growths and such. Um, we're going to go ahead and go over some of these brushes and how that how that each one of them acts so that again you know what kind of brushes uh, that you're getting when you, when you buy these. So I'm going to start off with the top. This is the this is the bark brush and this brush is a little a little tricky. Um, when you first probably try to use it and you make a stroke you think well that's not really bark. Um, but if you back up and you just let your pen touch it very lightly, you have a very rough material. And what we, the way that I've made these is so that if you were to enter a dark part of a tree or somewhere, uh, you know, such as up here in the dark, that if you press a little harder, it became soft. Because fundamentally, in softer areas, we have less, less texture. And so that's the reason that this is made the way it was, is because a lot of times when we use texture in a picture, um, we are actually applying texture in places it shouldn't. For example, if I took this and if I added some texture in the dark spot of this, or maybe, let's try this. A lot of times this is what makes a digital painting look digital, and this is pretty, you can, it's very hard to tell in something as small as this, but essentially what can happen is we have a shaded part of our picture that we over texture. And again, in the darkness, if you look around you and maybe a place that has shadows, you'll see that there's a lot less texture because the light is not not adding to that tooth in, in the texture. So that's why that we have this soft to dark um, so that you can add that. And, and it's as a photo editor, you want things to be realistic. Uh, so let's go ahead and add some of this so you can kind of see what it looks like here. I'm not going to use anything. There we go. Maybe just some white. Maybe I want to add like a highlight or something. Oh, it's picking up on my pink. Okay, and then over here I'm going to add it. I'm going to press kind of harder. There we go. And that's a very small example, of course, but you can kind of see what it looks like laid down, um, especially if you're on a tree or something, or something you, you just want to be more tree-like, a uh, piece of wood or a prop. Um, let's go ahead and move on to foliage. And this one is very interesting also because a lot of times in organic matter, when we're doing a painting or something, and you want to do the nearby brushes, um, you kind of, if, if you look at a lot of the master paintings, they're kind of, it's an abstract matter. It's over there, it's in the bushes, and then we might have the light kind of define define the bush. Um, that, in illustration, I'm still trying to get actually good at myself uh, as far as paint brushes, but this helps us to, to kind of do that for us in a picture, that if you want to add some foliage over here, so we're going to tap that. Try it bigger, maybe smaller. Oh. There we go. And this kind of adds that that chaos, especially if you make a stroke like that. That's gonna add. You see how that looks? Almost like a bush that's that's overgrowing that part of his leg. We're gonna back out because that doesn't look very good. Let's go on to grass here, and this one kind of actually, actually, I'm gonna, I'm gonna redo these because this kind of adds to the foliage. We can add a grass that's color select, and I'm gonna pull some of that out, almost as if there's some kind of big long strands of grass growing back there. Adds to our stacking of organics or growth. And you can kind of see as a brush stroke that this just has many strands. And you can use it on the ground, which we'll get to a little later uh, as far as these goes. Or you can you can make it pop out of something, which I definitely prefer. Because um, it's got this hard bottom to it. But if you use it behind something, 
it's much softer. Let's go ahead and go to the next one. And this one is called green light. And what it is, is let's say you've got, you know, you've, you've made this bush here, but you need the sun to come through it. Let's say the sun is behind him and you just can't, you know, the airbrush makes it too soft or this really helps you to add some light coming through that's got an organic texture to it that has still got kind of the texture of something that would be out in the wilderness. Let's kind of see what, it, see how that, it's got a crisscross scatter to it. And you can really apply that to, to any plant. Let's go ahead and back out of everything now. Oh, maybe I'm stuck there. That's okay. So let's go to grounds. And this one is great because, as you can see, we use this a little bit over here. And what this helps you with is, you know, without, without these down here, it doesn't really show a ground. But I can take this and I can kind of take a, a low opacity color and kind of tap it and say, hey, this is where the ground hits. And especially if you're doing this on, you know, what is ground already, this helps you to establish a little more perspective in areas. Maybe you lost perspective through photo editing, or maybe where you just want to add some, again, organic grounds to it. Um, so this is very nice. It's very helpful uh, to add some visual fundamentals to your image. It's kind of almost more, more they're more for uh, fundamental perspective than it is for effect. So we're on grunge right now. Let's go ahead and just select a green. Let's see how this looks. So this one is very similar to the bark, where you press very lightly and you got this texture. You press hard, it's very soft. The difference is that this one has a grungy texture to it. So if by any chance you were trying to apply rust to something or um, you were trying to show something a little more gross looking, this has got this spotty effect, almost like a mold. Uh, not quite, it's just a grunge. So uh, maybe you can add it to a spray painting uh, picture or I'm gonna add some down here. You can kind of see it's not quite like bark. It's just kind of got this, this grunge effect to it. Let's go ahead and go down to seashell. This one is by default, it should be on glow. Um, that's for a darker image. Uh, typically images with organic matter are darker, but I went ahead and turned it off for this tutorial video so you could see what it is. Uh, this is if you just want to add a little seashell of your choice. You've got an ocean picture and you've got all this grunge and stuff and you want to add seashells. So let's say that this right here where his paw is, is actually a darker part of the picture and you want to kind of show that there's little shells in there. You can take this and given you probably have a high, a more high resolution picture, which I lower the resolution of this for the sake of this tutorial, you can add these little shells so that you've kind of got your sand and, and those tiny little shells. This is pretty useful if you're trying to make something believable, especially in a, um, a more ocean environment or something that's a little more close to the coast. Let's look at stem. So stem and vine kind of go hand in hand. They're, they seem very similar, but they're very different at the same time. Stem, as you can see, has a lag behind it that's on purpose. What it will do is you can kind of control it in a very soft and graceful kind of way. And we can kind of go up and around and wrap around things. I can take this and I recommend high, I highly recommend color picking with this. You can break it up, and it's just a very slow and, and graceful kind of stem that, you know, maybe you want to use it for a flower, or um, you want to stem something up, you know, there are so many uses for kind of stem. Whereas vine is more, it's going to follow your pen, it's going to be more thick, and if you are fundamentally trained in, in the way that trees and, and vines work, uh, the way they have it, so let's say this is a tree, got one branch, got the other branch, or even one right here, one right here. And so that, keeping that in mind, let's just kind of make one branch off over here. We're going to kind of change, whoops, we don't want to change it that much. And you can kind of see how that would work in an image. So, so let's back out a little bit. And let's say this were a little tiny detail in your picture and you made some some stems. So I'm sorry, some vines. 
This is very useful, especially when trying to. You can kind of layer it upon itself, especially when trying to make some kind of growth or something, some history there. And the more I layer up, the more it kind of creates itself as a feature rather than an effect. So it's a very useful tool. It has some color variation to it for realism. Let's go ahead and move to the last one here. This is called Weeds, and this one is actually very fun. So let's go ahead and select a different color over here, and I'm going to go like this. And again, there's that color variation, but this is what it does. So it creates weeds and it pulls down, so you can add really some growth and weeds to anything. Let's say I wanted to fill his back up completely with these. And then let's take some darker ones, maybe a little more dark. Let's see what that happens. What happens there? Less saturated, more dark. It's got some bleed to it, so it's it kind of blends. And you can see that we've created all these little weeds. They're not quite grass. They could be grass, but I'd say they're a little more scattered for grass. Grass gr grows straight up. I suppose they could be in the right effect if you want to use them for grass. They could be a version of it, depending on what you wanted to use. Anyways, those are the organic the organic brushes for Particle Shop and Painter. I highly recommend them if uh, in any case that you're looking to add some nature to your image and you're struggling with painting it on or airbrushing it on. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you around the internet.